Welcome to the Theatre of Others podcast. My name is Adam Marple and I'm the co-artistic director of the Theatre of Others. With the COVID-19 pandemic forcing a shutdown and re-evaluation of space and gathering, we at the Theatre of Others are thinking about what stories we need and how best we can share them. We believe space is psychology and it informs the way in which an audience interacts and reacts to what is presented to them. We create uniquely theatrical events in bespoke sensory performance spaces crafted to encourage curiosity and grant the audience permission to commune with the play. Now that that space has moved online, how can we encourage interaction and action amongst an audience virtually? The Theatre Brothers produces plays that both welcome and challenge the audience. We are committed to international collaboration and are a laboratory that helps artists grow through intensive study of their craft. The Theatre Brothers creates a shared community of artists and audiences for the purpose of exploring the most profound issues of our lives and times. We believe the play watches the audience. The audience is necessary and they are witness to what happens and you get to be witness to us making that happen. The purpose of this podcast is to open up our process and let you in. We're peeling back the curtain, so to speak, and encouraging you to follow along, to ponder, prod, and question, to join us and criticize us if need be. Being a witness is no passive task, and it requires much from you. Are you up for the journey? On the podcast today from Melbourne, Australia, our co-artistic directors, Woody Miller, and myself in Cairo, Egypt. This podcast contains explicit language. Hi, Adam. Hi, Booty. <laughs> How you going? I'm all right. How are you? You won't break my soul. Mm-mm. You won't break my soul. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I won't. Neither will they. F them. <laughs> Out to everybody, everybody. Yeah. Oh, did I tell you that my workshop is filling up? No, but that's good. I imagine it probably would. Well, thank you, Jesus. And, thank you, Black. And what Jesus. workshop is? And what workshop is that, Booty? Well, I'm doing a co-taught workshop with Fabio Mata. We're doing oh. mask work and. Fitzmore's voice work, and we're doing Clown 1 and Clown 2. So if you've done Clown, we're going to start working those clown muscles. Mm. Come on and get in the gym and work those muscles. Mm. I want my sound. <laughs> beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, fun is a muscle, and you have to keep it working. You know, I've, I've told my students time and time again that it's not just about like, oh, I have my clown, I'm done. No, you have to keep working, working the system. Um, and we're going to go through the whole pedagogy, the whole pedagogical arc. Um, That's awesome. That's great. For two weeks. So it's going to be it. fun and we're teaching together. You're going to have two yeah. teachers teaching you clown. It's going to be amazing. Go to the website, theaterbrothers.com. It's right there on the front page. You can check out, check that out. It'll link over mm. to mm. Uh, the clown workshop and you can find out more information about that. What are the dates on those again, Booty? That's April. It's all the month of April, uh, right? It starts in April, April 10th. So the week of April 10th is the first week, and then the second week is after that, and then the third week is after that. Three weeks. Fantastic, fantastic. <laughs> and as you work your fun muscles, you should be working your brain muscles by joining us for the Theater Brothers Book Club. That's going to yes. be coming out the last Friday we of every We do a lot, month. Adam. I know we do. We do a lot. Not the last Friday, last Monday. We're doing it. We are. We have a. We have a very busy year. Actually, we, we have the Theater Brothers Book Club. You've got your clown workshops. We've got our workshop in Bali. We've got the Audio New Play Festival. Bali, August nineteenth to the 29th. Come yeah. and so many people are have been going. Where do I? Where can I Same. train Same. and do the things that Same. you two keep talking about? It's yeah. time, y'all. We were yeah. doing. You were. We are inviting you to come and train in the Theater of Others. Uh, philosophy with the Balinese. That's right. That's right. August nineteenth to the twenty ninth. Yep. Information will be up on the website soon enough. We'll also uh, we'll also be announcing when that is available so that you can uh, get in there really quickly because it's going to be a limited number because yeah. the way that we train it has to be so yeah. Um, we'll be working in the village. It's 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 legit, y'all. It's going to be yeah. really really wonderful. Yeah, it's so twenty got... years of research coming together. Yeah. We got some really cool stuff happening this this year, and uh, we want you to be a part of it. You've been with us for what is it now? One hundred and sixty three, one hundred sixty four, one hundred sixty five episodes. So, Should we do yeah. something when we get to one hundred and sixty nine? No, <laughs> we're not. Maybe it's <laughs> <be the> <laughs> 
episode no. 169 will just be ASMR. No. no. Hi, Adam. Do you like talking no. about theater? Why not? I love talking about theater. Yes, exactly. Why not? Why Why not do something on 169? ASMR with me. Come on, Adam. Try it. Just give it, give it a go. Just try it. Come on. Why am I doing this? Because this feels... I'm telling you, if I, I if we do a whole episode like that, our numbers will go shoot skyrocket. But that then sounds we're like have a to get like. This sounds like where? a solo episode that you can do. You can do a solo episode ASMR with Cootie. <laughs> Jakina, <laughs> Jakina, can I do an ASMR episode? You know what we should get? We should we should finally get the binaural uh, microphone, and you do one ear, and I do the other ear, and we just oh. tickle each, tickle people's brains with theater facts. Tickle each other's ears. Yeah, tickle each other's brains. <laughs> tickle, tickle. Theater, proscenium, downstage, upstage, space, break the binary, liberation, liberation, liberation. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> but Lord. this is the thing, you know, the, the, what I love about this is we're, we are, most people listen to us like on their headset. Yes. Uh, yes, of course. Sarah Cassis. Yes. You're listening right now, I know. And you're you're rocking your baby to sleep. We got welcome to our new family member, the theater of others family. Sarah you know what we should do? Baby. We what should, should yeah, we, do? We, should, we, we should make a baby album so that you can put the headphones on the belly. And oh we can my God. we can Jakina. we can indoctrinate the babies. When they come out, they're already theater. They're ready for all the theater that's going to happen. Kina, do you hear that? We can we can put some some uh, theta brain waves into mm-hmm. the sound, and and also we have to put whale songs. Yeah. I don't know if that's a whale. Yeah, but, or but, if that's but it'd be but it'd be theater. Mothers, theater. <laughs> Pedro Pascal. I'm a guy. I'm a guy. I'm a guy. I'm a guy. Are you talking about theater? 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 Are you <laughs> this is like, I'm <laughs> It's <sighs> so wrong, it's right. It's yeah. so wrong, it's right. Hey, so, we'll, what a gem. We'll spe- uh, uh, <laughs> okay, so tell me, why is he so sexy? Tell the truth, Adam. Uh, I mean, he's an attractive, he's an attractive guy. Mm-hmm. Um,. He is, I think he's, there's confidence, but there's also a silliness to him. Mm -hmm. Like if you ever see an interview with him, he's incredibly silly. And there's almost a, and there's a sense of like, I don't understand why I've become popular in the last like five years. But then when he's, when he's on set, when he's doing stuff, he just looks super involved and engaged and, and dedicated to whatever the hell he's doing. Like the SNL sketch to go from. To go from Joel in The Last of Us, which is always oh, got to just have a grimace on your face, to then SNL, like he commits, he commits. Yeah, to he's it. he. I I I thought his his um whole show was brilliant. The Mario Brothers. I mean, he's he's fantastic. The Mar- Super Mario killed me, killed me, dead. I was dead. He's great. I was dead. I was dead. I was dead. I was dying. I, I was dying, and I was dead. I was dying, and I was dead. Oh yeah, we can we can like make up our own language now. Pedro Pascal has given us permission. Great. So how, what's yep. what's our what's our new way of talking now? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what? You know what? I'm looking. I'm looking at. Uh, you know where he went to school? You know where he went to school? Let, let me guess. Okay. Carnegie Mellon. No. 
You know um, what? You know what? If he went to school when he when he would have been going to school, you may have gone to school with him. <gasps> he went. To, he was at NYU. He was NYU, and he's the same age as you as well. No, he's he's a, he's no, he's a little bit. He's younger. He's two years younger. Yeah, but it all depends on how late he went to school. I remember I was late. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's true. I was late. Uh, never mind then. That's why he's such a fool. Did he go to ETW? Uh, it doesn't say. That's, it's, there's not, there's not the, the description of which, which school. But he, he went to yeah. NYU he went undergrad, to Tish. ETW. Yeah. Tish, he went to Tish. Tish School of the Arts. Wow. Yeah. But he's, he's, one, he's one of the few that like survived the industry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so folks, you're hearing it here first. Pedro Pascal will be joining us on the podcast soon. Oh my god! Uh, oh my god! With, with oh my Oprah god, followed, really? followed very closely. Yeah. Uh, Jack, can you please uh, get a hold of Pedro Pascal? Can you get a hold of Pedro Pascal's team and yeah. um, have him come on because he's a theater guy. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, Jack, can you email Pedro and then follow up with Oprah? We haven't heard back from her yet. Just do a follow up email with Oprah. I think Oprah's ghosting us, personally. Well, I don't know. I'm taking. We're still I'm wa- taking it personal. We're we're also waiting for Beyonce to get back to us as well. So, Beyonce, you know what? You know what? Beyonce won't break my soul. Mm-mm. She, she won't not. break my soul. We won't she let won't break her. My soul. We won't let her. I, and I'll tell every. And I'll tell everybody. 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 Yeah. yeah. Oh no, Adam, don't do that to yourself. You know what you know what that means. I know. I did I did it and I regretted it. And each now time. it's there. You just finished the song in your head. You just finished I heard it. I just heard it. You went, rock the party right. I knew it. I heard it. I heard it. Stop it. So now what do you so so what is the key to getting you to stop thinking about those things? Talk about something else. <laughs> okay, let's 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 close your eyes. Close mm-hmm. your eyes. Mm-hmm. Okay, and I want you to imagine that you hear the trees and the water running by us, mm-hmm. and you're on retreat mm. with your theater company. Oh, soon. And now you hear roosters. Oh, okay. <laughs> and now you hear dogs having sex. They're fighting and they're barking at each other and arguing. Okay, not <laughs> what I was expecting, but I'll go with it. And you reach over and you grab a glass of moonshine. All right. And you sit there with it. <laughs> I'm 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 being taken back. <laughs> being taken back to a very specific memory here. <laughs> what memory is that, Adam Marple? <laughs> it's, a, it's a memory of me sitting in a chair in a corner watching Ink Master sipping moonshine while you and Steven work on a script. <laughs> because we were doing what? We had a residency. <laughs> we had a residency somewhere. Oh, wow. You like that? Do you like that? You like that um that um segue? It was it was nice. It was a lo- it was a lovely memory. <laughs> yes. I took you someplace. And and I know Galtney's all going ee. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. His toes are going diddly. And now he's blushing. <laughs> so what are we talking about today, Adam Marple? We are talking about residencies and retreats. Those places oh. that you that you go away from, that you go away to. They're not a vacation. They're not a yeah. workshop. It's a place yeah. for you to invest in your artist. And maybe something comes out of it. Maybe it's just a retreat away from what comes before. But um, coming together with other artists, kind of workshopping, kind of uh, networking, kind of... Uh, vacation, that beautiful liminal space that an artist can do uh, and go to because there's a lot of uh, residencies and retreats that are being announced now for the summer, including our own. And so, yes, 
Yeah. We want to talk about so, our experiences uh, and look, your experiences. So, why would you even do this? Why? <sighs> why? why? Um, I love these. I love these as, as a place, one, to meet new artists, to meet artists that wouldn't be in your sphere of influence because you're having people from all over the world come together and different, uh, different genres, different uh, disciplines, different training. That's always fantastic. So the, the Director's Lab Mediterranean that I did the series of in uh, uh, October of last year, November of last year, uh, that was a that was a retreat in a way, and I got to meet people from all over the Mediterranean region that I never would have known, and I would have I got to see their artistry in a way that I never would have known. Mm-hmm. Um, there's also so there's networking that gets involved. There's there's education because I learn all kinds of new things, but also there's there's learning in terms of like maybe they will share with you some things. You know, I've I've had the opportunity to share viewpoints and composition stuff in these residencies with other people. And they've shared back with me, like I, you know, we're doing Keith Johnstone's impro and I did some impro work uh, about class and status, um, in a, in a, in a retreat. And so now I can actually read the, uh, one of the, one of the directors there at the director's lab, um, Olive Pasha still, um, Olive, Olive Pasha Pascal still, um, she did it. Olive and it Pascal was Pascal Pascal still. Olive Pasha Pascal still. Yeah. Now say that ten times fast. No, I cannot. I cannot. I cannot be done. Olive Pascal pa- Pasha. Pasha. What? Pasha. Pasha. Pascal pa- still. Olive Pasha Pascal still. Yeah, exactly. And also Sam Hunter as well. Sam Hunter also did a little bit of this as well. So to then to come come away from that and then be reading the book, it's also great. But. Um, it was also a place for me to kind of decompress and retreat away from what I was doing and kind of leave it behind and then come back fresh to what I was doing with new eyes, with a different, different way of thinking. So was, that love... a, you, a me, was that another means of training for you as well? Yes, always is, yes. Sometimes, like, you I mean, uh, for instance, uh, La Mama, La Mama Umbria, uh, the director's symposium. Do they still There's, have that? They are, and, I, and they've got a really, oh, my God, they've got a really great uh, group of directors this year. Who? Thomas Ostermeyer. A ro- yeah. Ong Keng Sen. What? Dmitry Krimov. What? <gasps> yeah, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> it's a great panel of directors and, and others that they're going to announce, but those three, for sure, obviously, are leading the, holy shit. Yeah. On Kang Sin is amazing, y'all. Yes, I know, I know. I was directed by On Kang Sin can do things that I have. I On Kang Sin is the director that I've I've seen him work with amateurs mm-hmm. and get amateurs to do things that I'm like, how did you get them to do that? Yeah, he's a genius. He's brilliant. He's so yeah. good. He's yeah. so good. Oh wow! Mm, yeah. I wish I could go. When is it? Uh, ooh, let me let me see. Let me pull it up on my phone and see because I I'm thinking about doing it, but I make Egypt. You're, money they're now, close so. to you. I know, but I make Egypt money, so I don't. I can't afford it. Um, Catch uh, the bus. First, <laughs> July 10th to the 24th is the first session. So there's two two week sessions. July 10th to the 24th and July 25th to August 8th. Those are the. Those are the two um, sessions. But I'm going to be teaching in Canada then. Boo, what's in Canada? I'm also going to be teaching for Chris Bays in New York then. Nice, there we go. July 5th, the week of July 5th. July 5th, right after the July 4th 5th. of July. Nice. Yeah, I'm going to be teaching cool. for uh, uh, Pandemonium Studios. So go to nice. pandemoniumstudios.com. There dot com. I think so. It'll and, uh, be linked to the show notes. Sign up for my workshop if you're going to be in New York City, or you can sign up in uh, Toronto for Eugene Ma. Eugene, Eugene Ma just opened up a new studio there. I'll get wow. the details. Well, cool. and, uh, we can, we'll talk about it uh, when it's more uh, when it's more solidified. But it's happening. Nice. I think it's the very nice third week or fourth week of July. And See all these the residencies, all these workshops, all these retreats. It's, it's, I mean, for real you gotta though, do, you gotta do stuff. Exactly. You gotta I mean, do stuff. 
I mean, okay, so that's the director's side. So yeah. for actors, we had I had I had the Chautauqua Theatre Company for what that actors with it was a summer stock, you know. Yeah. So what's the difference between summer stock and residency? Well, I think summer stock normally doesn't have an educational aspect to it in the way that Chautauqua does. Like I, I know that they're taking classes while they're doing that. Usually summer stock is just, you know, you're, you're doing some shows in the summer, you go to wait to the cat skills and you do something and then you, then you leave. But Chautauqua's, mm. I wouldn't call it summer stock. I would, I would say it is a residency. Like you are there learning, but you're also giving mm. something back to the theater mm. as well. And with That's your true. labor, with your acting. Um, and you're dealing with the, the, the parents of the theater. Yeah, <laughs> I mean the parents of the theater are creepy. Do you remember that? Yeah. And how yeah. they like, and it's so funny because the grad school students that <laughs> that go, they're like, "Why is this, this woman acting so crazy? Like she's my mother, because she's your parent. She's your mama now. She sponsored your she sponsored your your ticket, baby. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> and now she's your mama. Mm-hmm. Like you have to come in over and have dinner with the family, and and the grad students are like go over their house to have dinner with the family and ride on the boat. Well, I'll take the boat ride. And then go off on the holidays. And But it's summer, not as crazy, but some are crazy. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Because they're lonely. <laughs> and they know that the, the actors are going to be famous one day and they want to like be like, that's my I child. Knew, I knew him when. I knew him when. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. So, it's, yeah. So, I guess just should talk with the other company for actors would be would be a residency. Yeah, mm-hmm. it would be a residency. Yeah. yeah. Or what director's residencies are there? Watermill. Oh yeah, Watermill's another that's a great one. That's a great one. That's it's a not great just for directors, one. for designers, for artists, that's for, for artists. actors, for everybody. For yeah. anything. Just blank anything. Yeah. Watermill's a great one. Uh, yeah. And that you know, Bob also he workshops his shows at Watermill as well. And yeah. you get to, you know, and he, he loves artists. Bob, meaning Robert Wilson, <laughs> loves artists. Um, oh, that, yeah, Watermill, y'all, put that, th- that'll be in the show notes. Y'all need to apply for Watermill. That's yeah. a really good one. Especially if, you, if you've never been to America, it's a really great way to, oh. to get close to, it's not in New York City, <clears throat> it's in Long Island. <laughs> Long Island. Oh, have you, have I done my, have I done my um, my regions of New York oh, accent? <laughs> no, I can't wait. Here we go. Okay. <clears throat> me 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 me. <clears throat> and then and then now listen, y'all. This is me playing. If I mess something up, <laughs> forgive me. I'm no, having it's, a it's, good time. It's on the podcast forever. For here okay. here on out to <clears throat> immemorial time immemorial. <laughs> Me, 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 me. <clears throat> okay. So I so I tell people like, you know, when you like I like doing like Manhattan. So like it's like it but it it depends because you have different kinds of people from Man- Manhattan. You have the ones that talk like this, like, you know, I'm from Manhattan. They're the ones that are like kind of like um and, and people always like this is like a class thing. So like it's actually it's actually more like like how how long you've been in New York. Cause then you can get like but that's for the South. It's like the longer it's like and it's a little it's a little uh you know, it's like but I, I actually know some very like like really wealthy people that talk like this. They talk like that. You know, and it's like because the whole family has like, you know, they own like all real estate in New York City. Um, but then if you go, then if you go further down and you go to you go to Brooklyn, you know, they go to Brooklyn and it's like, it, but it depends on like, if it's like, if it's like black Brooklyn, if black Brooklyn is like this. So like, you know, like, yo, what, what the fuck are you doing over there? And it's like, but then it's like, and then it's like Italian, you know, it's a, a, an Italian, an Italian Brooklyn accent. It's like you got a little bit of a little bounce in it, you know. And then if, and then if it's like my 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 landlord Saul Saul Saul, he's Yiddish, and um and he was he was amazing. Saul was he was people always you know they always get the Hasidics like a bad rap, but they're not bad. They're not bad at all. My my friend my my landlord Saul. Oh my god. Oh my god. Saul. He let us have two months rent free because he liked us. We were, we had a, we had an apartment in a, 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 at a, 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 a place before his place, but he said I like you. I, I like you, so I give you the first. I, I give you the. I give you the. I give you the first two months free. 
and then, and then, and then if you go like, okay, so then if you go like the Queens, Queens is like, you know, it's like, it's like all over there because you got the Russians and the the, the Russians and the and the Queens, the and then and then uh and then you know the the, the Jamaicans and the, the Jamaican Queens, you got the Jamaican Queens, you got the Jamaican Queens, <laughs> and then then you and then you go up further north to the Bronx. You know, you know, Jenny from the block, you know, it's just the Bronx. The Mary J. Blige, it's the Bronx. And, and then, you know, and then it's got a little bit of Latin flavor in there as well. But it's like, you know, it's the Bronx. It's different. It's different. And then you go further north. If you go further north, you got, you got, you got, you got, you got um, what's it, what's it called? Um, thank you, Westchester. 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 And, the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and they say things like, get the fuck out of here. Who does that? Who does that? Get the fuck out of here. Who does that? No. And then if you go further down, you go to Staten Island. Staten Island, you know, they've got a whole nother thing going on there. You know, just like it's it's got this whole, you know, Staten Island vibe, you know. Even even the rap there is like Staten Island. Staten Island, you know, it's 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 you know, it's like they got their own whole thing going on there. And so like then then you got Long Island. They got a Long Island, Long Island. Long Island's where the water mill is, and it's in, it's in Long Island. And then Joyzy, you gotta go to Joyzy. <laughs> How'd I do, Adam? Uh. <laughs> 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 oh my God, I'm gonna lose a lot of friends. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're kind of like, what is wrong with him? None of those accents are right. <laughs> That's not New York. New York. Yo, I'm from New York City. New York City. Who would have thunk? You <laughs> no, but I, I like, I like, I, but I like some of the like sayings though. It's like the Westchester stuff. It's like, put your socks in the drawer. The, the drawer? No, the drawer. Put the socks in the drawer. Close the door. You'll never close hear the window. Me no, close the let's say close the window. Close the window. Close the window. Put the socks in the drawer and close the window. <laughs> What's going on in this house? You'll never <laughs> hear me. You'll never hear me do a southern accent. You'll oh my god! Me. I've I've oh my god! I've I've I, I have heard you do a southern accent. Don't even try. Well, it, when I'm drunk and tired, yeah, exactly. That's and come out. and sad. You get you get you get very country when you're sad. <laughs> Or when you're and when you're home with your mom, yeah. I I, re- I recently visited Tennessee, and uh, we we went out to breakfast, and <laughs> I told you this the the lady at lady at the diner she said you want to be a skit with that and there was like a trip <laughs> thong a be a skit you want to be a skit with that and did you want to be a skit oh of course I wanted a biscuit uh, yes oh, ma'am uh, I'll, you, take a, I'll take a biscuit please a biscuit can I take a biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you mean a biscuit? Yeah, exactly. A uh, a uh, 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 big what? B y i s k i t. Biscuit. Biscuit. Can I have biscuit, please? I got a biscuit. Well, speaking of which, so would a residency like what is it called? A Humana, Humana festival. Uh, uh, is that a residency? Uh, well, a manifestal doesn't exist anymore, but y- yeah, I'm it, clutching, it, I'm clutching my pearls. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I can see you clutching your pearls. Um, yeah, no, it, it's uh, it doesn't, it's not around anymore. Why? And it, I guess they took away its funding. I mean, the it didn't what? sponsor it anymore. I know. What? I know. Yeah. Why? Why, Adam Marple? Why? Funding? I don't know. It's. I'm just well, tell, tell our sure. listeners what it was, the ones who don't know, and why we've just uh, lost Oh, no, hold something. on, hold on. I'm just double-checking to make sure that I got this right. Uh, you, better, you better do. You're going to get no. canceled. 2021 was the last one, yeah. <gasps> I'm clutching my pearls. I know. Why? Yeah. Why, Adam? Why? Uh, let me see if I can find it real quick. What's the website say? Oh, well, there is no one more website. There's, <gasps> it's tw- 2021 is the last one. So, uh, yeah. 
if I remember correctly, it was it was uh, during the pandemic, and um, they they were worried about funding, and then Humana, which is the healthcare uh, organization that was funding it for since 1976, basically just kind of took the funding away because they needed it for PPE. I guess so. But there's nothing about if it's coming back or whatever. It's just, and there's actually nothing listed about why it's closed, why it isn't doing anything anymore. Oh well, tell tell our listeners what humani- the Humania Ah, uh, here, here we go. This is, so, okay, New York Times. Uh, with its future uncertain, the Humanity Festival will not return in 2022. Um, showcase of works by contemporary American playwrights will not take place this year, either in person or online, and after that, it's up in the air. So clearly, they've answered the question. It's not in 2023 either. So Humanity Festival of, play, of New American Plays uh, was at Actors Theater of Louisville, and it was uh, a whole kind of uh, summer season of new plays by, you know, Sarah Rule got her start there. Um, okay, well, but, you know, Sarah Rule is suspect as a playwright. I can't stand that. And continue. Okay, all right. There's that many play other about players. the vibrator. That play right that's, about the vibe. That play. That's I can't one stand play. That play. I can't stand. And it then the, that's one and play. then Orpheus descending. Come on. All right. Anyway, there are many other playwrights, but I'm just off the top of my head because I remember seeing her work there. Uh, but Chuck <gasps> Mee, Charles Mee, got a, a lot of yeah, his stuff yeah. done there. C- City Company. They've had residencies. You know, Les Waters was in charge of it for many many years. Um, but they would also have they would have a company of actors come in just for that. And it was usually um, it's that, that either either grad students or in between undergrad and grad, that kind of that and it age was like range. an internship. It was free, it was like right? A, it was an internship. Um, but you I were... think I think that I think Najib I think Najib actually did oh Najib has stories. Yeah. <laughs> I was I was there, I assistant directed a production uh, during that and I met uh, Oh and how was it? Well, the production, I, I was not working on a Humana production. I was working on Dracula, but I was there while the, they were working on those Dracula? things. What's wrong with Dracula? It's the Christmas Carol of October, is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> and, it's, and, and so they do, a, you know, Actress Theater does Christmas Carol every single year, but they also do Dracula every single year. And it's just, it's a bit wooden. The script is a bit wooden, and it's just, you know, it's kind of a rinse and repeat every single year. And so I was, I was there. I don't know what, what my purpose was there. That's, that's basically when I learned to hate assistant directing was that. <laughs> but, but I hear a anyway. lot. Of, I there, I hear that the experience there is where a lot of people go to hate a lot of things. That's true. So yeah, is that, that's not a residency. That's an internship. That's a very different thing. Internships, not great. Not currently worth your while. But a residency. I heard, was, I heard it was, it's modern slave laborer. It is. Yes. Internships are not worth your while. You heard it here first, folks. If Don't yeah. do an internship, especially it an unpaid not internship. It is it not paying your dues. It is not paying your dues. You owe nothing to anybody. You don't need to pay your dues. You, know, you owe nothing to, to anybody. You uh, don't owe nothing to nobody. You don't owe nothing to nobody. Don't do an internship. Now, there, there's, a, there's a weird... <laughs> if you're in grad school, there's a weird quasi thing called an internship, which is more, in terms of like a director, it was more of a mentorship than an internship. But sometimes, they'll, sometimes the grad school wants to intern you to, a, to a, a theater company, and that's just modern slave labor. Don't do that. Yeah, that's... Mm. Residency and a retreat are very different. I feel like the intern model is dying away. As it, as it should. As it absolutely yeah. should. Yeah. Now, a work yeah. placement, a work placement is different than an internship. An internship, there is placement? that there is a job at the end of it. There's a guaranteed job. Of it. It's it's almost like pre job training, a work placement. How could you lose your work placement then? Well, they could just. I mean, they could fire you after they've hired you. But there's a guaranteed job at the end of it. But you're going to work there for a, a a time leading up to it to get the skills needed so that you can hit the ground running on day one. And then what if they fire you before the job? Then that's an internship, and that you don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> literally i don't know of anybody i have never met anybody in the theater who has gotten a job at the theater that they interned at oh that's a good conundrum yeah okay listeners if, is there anyone out there that disagrees with this comment 
Is there anyone out there that had an internship turn into an actual job? And I'm thinking about it too now. I don't think anybody. It's it's slave labor. It is. It is slave labor. You may be seen by somebody and then hired somewhere else, but you're not working at the place that you've been giving away your slave labor to. No. Wow. Because all those motherfuckers that work there ain't giving up their job and like no, let you have a job. No, of course they're not. No, they've they've got this great slave labor system that they can exploit off of and keep their their jobs. That's yeah. Internships are shit. We're, We're not talking about that. An internship, Adam. Were you burned? Did, did, I never. Did an internship never, hurt you? I never. I never applied. I show never, me on the show me on the dial where the in, internship touched you. <laughs> right here. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I, I. Uh, there was, there was a um, society of directors uh, and choreographers SDC did an observership, which is the closest that that was to an. Uh, What's an, an observership? It's even worse than an internship. Basically, it you're worse. just. You're it sounds just, like woke internship. It's just it, it. It basically means you sit there and you watch and you learn from <laughs> the great masters. You don't talk to you don't you don't get to you don't get to interview or, or learn. You just have to sit in the rehearsals and learn. And I I was early career director thinking I don't know what to do, and so I applied. And there were many different you know plays and musicals that there were. Um, and I, there was a, there was some great people that I wanted to like be in the room with, and they wanted to put me on the wedding singer. The new. Broadway musical that came out at the time, and I said, "I'm good, thank you. I don't, I don't, I won't be taking this observership." That's like I, your worst nightmare. It really was. This is that why I said them no. Serving you fish while watching. Yeah, exactly. It was. It was dinner theater. It was. It was at a seafood <laughs> restaurant. <laughs> was, and they were doing the wedding singer. Yeah. Wow. Now. Now I, I I have all respect to all the artists who are working on the wedding singer, but that's not what I needed to see. That would not have made me a better director. You, you didn't need to learn from that. There was nothing else you needed to learn from that. There was nothing you were going to glean from that. Well, I'm sure I could have learned something from it, but I didn't need that at that time because that's a very different direction. And that's that's the thing is like that's a path that then you're on of, and that's not a path that I wanted to be. Just like I didn't want to uh, climb the climb the artistic director path. I didn't want to do that path of regional theater thing either. But so these... So then my question is, what kind of credentials do you need to have for these residencies? Well, usually, I mean, there there is, you know, there a lot of these places have a, a thing that you fill out. Like, are you coming with work in terms of Watermill? Like, what's your idea? How is this, how is this retreat going to help the work that you're doing? Um... You know, at La Mama, they ask, you know, at this point in your career, how are the how is this residency going to help you? It's more mostly about thinking about saying, look, this is a, 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 I'm, I'm leaving something that I'm doing and I need space away from that thing. How is this thing going to help you back into the thing that you're going to go back into? Because it's not like it's not it's not a negation of what you're doing before. It's I need fresh eyes. And this is going to help me have fresh eyes to that thing. So most of the questions that they're asking you are literally questions of like, why now? Why this and why now? It's not so much like, what have you done? Prove yourself to me why I should accept you. I've not found anything where you need, quote unquote, credentials for a residency is there or a, a retreat. Do they have like a, a, a number limit for the La Mama in Italy? Yes, yes because, the, because <laughs> plug, 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 you're staying at a 500-year-old monastery and so they they literally have only a certain amount of rooms for you to stay in. So, so when you say that, is there central anything? Yeah, no. It, so this is uh, so when Ellen Stewart got the MacArthur Genius Grant, she took that money and bought the monastery and then modernized it. So okay. So yes, yeah, so, I mean, there's it's in the summer. Um, it's it's in the kind of the hills and the mountains, so it's nice and. Got a nice breeze. I don't think there was an air condition. There's fans. I haven't been there at the winter, so I don't know what it's like. Um, there's electricity. There's Wi Fi. They have a winter session. No, they don't. No, because then so who, the mama goes back there to there during York. the winter time. Uh, I think the lady who runs the house who cooks for you. She cooks on a 500 year old oven. Wait. So then, what? Yeah, it's great. The food is amazing. 
the why. So would a residency, I mean. could there potentially be a proposed residency for a theater company in the wintertime? There could be. There, and that's a lot of, a lot of these places, you know, uh, don't run 365 days a year. Usually they are a, a, a dedicated six week to eight week time in the summer usually, because that's when artists can get away. But what's happening in lot now is a lot of these places are going, we can't just leave this place fallow for, you know, nine months out of the year. Could there also be a residency that theater companies apply to and come to? And then you've got, you know, we have a chateau in the north of France. You know, would you like to use it for whatever, to develop a I project mean, or whatever? I mean, wink, wink, yeah. nudge, nudge, Adam Marple. I know God is listening. I know, I know. Uh, but, theater of Others board, can you listen to this, please? I know, but the problem is, is that we're usually busy in those winter months, and we're usually free in the summer months. So that's the kind of the the trade off of like, there's a lot of stuff that's actually happening in the quote unquote. There's a lot of stuff that's happening in the off season, the summer season, but there's a lot of stuff that's happening in the season as well. But people but can people get away? Can they uh, take themselves out of the season? Because you'll be, you won't be able to, you know audition or teach or do these things yeah. if you're in the north of France at a chateau for three months. So uh, you're saying it's expensive? It can be. It definitely can be. Yeah. We should find out how much it costs. What, to rent a chateau in the north of yeah. France? <laughs> yeah. How much does it cost to rent a chateau in the north of France? I don't know. There's plenty of chateaus that are just sitting there doing nothing. Just give us... Just give I, us mean, I mean, since COVID... <laughs> Ugh, yeah. I know, right? It could be ugly. Mm. I'm actually, though, why, why, why we're talking about this is because I literally have seven tabs open for things that I'm looking at for this summer, trying to figure out what else to do. So Okay, so what's on your tabs? Read your tabs. Uh, okay, so the first one is uh, Contemporary Performance Practices. This is going to be in, uh, is this in Croatia? Ooh, that sounds nice. In Dubrovnik, yes. And so this summer is um, uh, Sasha Waltz and Company from Berlin and Ellen Lauren from City Company. They're going to be there. So I was looking at that. That looks fun. Mm -hmm. um, the Pan-African Creative Exchange in South Africa. I was looking at that. That Ooh, looks fun. Ooh, Adam. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm here. You're in Africa. Um, I am in Africa. Go down to the bottom. I'm thinking about it. Uh, there's a couple of other ones. I mean, I am, I am uh, seriously considering La Mama again. Um, I mean, I mean, I mean. That's where I met Castellucci. That's where I, I know. met. See? That's where I met uh, Meng Zhongwei. That's where, I, that's where I actually met a lot of uh, people from Singapore uh, as well. A lot of that. Ms. Podesta. Were there. Ms. Podesta went there. Uh, uh, Elizabeth DeRosa went there. Uh, there was a lot of people oh, that came. Oh, Dr. Elizabeth did, uh, DeRosa. She didn't. Ha she didn't have a good time though. She didn't have a good time with it. But she never has uh, a good time around white people. <laughs> what? <laughs> Every single Singaporean has to bring their own chili patty to to. Hello, like, exactly, yeah, that's, exactly. That's what it is, yeah. No flavor, no flavor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm. And, you know, I'm thinking of what I'm other things are your tabs? Cheese. What other tabs? What are your other tabs? Uh, do you not uh, want to release them because you you don't want the competition? Exactly. <laughs> No, but I will I will link a lot of residencies in the show notes because there are things that I'm for sure not going to do because I'm not going to I'm not going to be in the states during these times. I'm trying to th like where is around me that I can get to? Croatia is very close to me. South Africa is not necessarily close, but it's in the same continent. Um, you know, the Medi the director's lab Mediterranean how long, was just how a long Beirut. The flight is to South Africa from Egypt. It's about 8 hours. 9 hours? 9 it's, hours? Yeah. Yeah. Eight, eight yeah. nine hours, depending on. And if, if you can get a straight shot, usually you can't get a straight shot sometimes. So. Really? From Egypt to yeah. South Africa? Yeah, it's a little weird. It's a little weird sometimes. I don't know. What airlines? Uh, depends. I mean, Egypt Air, not great. But, that sounds you know, scary. It, it is a bit. Um, <laughs> I was telling somebody about my, my flying experience to Beirut the other day, and they were saying that uh, they literally threw a roll at my head a, a, a roll, like a subway roll, wrapped in plastic wrap, and they just threw it as they as they went down the aisle. They just like like what are they, Donald it. Trump? <laughs> yeah, exactly, Donald Trump in Puerto Rico giving out paper towels. That's how they. And I was just like, the fuck? I mean, I know this is a they quick flight. A, they threw a roll at you. 
Yeah, they threw it. I mean, like, it wasn't like show me the it wasn't gesture. like show me the gesture. Show me the gesture. That was a gesture. If I wasn't looking, and, I would have been. What were hit. the other passengers doing? <laughs> yeah, they were reaching up for their roll, and I'm like, this is just bread. This is just a subway roll. Like, this is what I get. Like, did you get this? any water? Uh, I got a juice box. How long is the flight? This was a quick flight. This was this was only hour hour and a half. But what other airlines other... do you have? So Egypt Air is. Are there any safe airlines in Africa? Yeah, of course there. Of course there are. I mean, you know, Emirates. You flew me to Australia oh, on Emirates. Emirates. Oh, Emirates. So yeah, Emirates is good. Um, are there good airlines in Egypt? Mm, no. <laughs> Are there good airlines in Africa? No, but the Middle East, there's some great airlines. Emirates, I mean, Qatar, some of the best on the in, et, on the planet. Et, Etihad, yeah, exactly. Those are all great. Those are all lovely airlines. Etihad, Qatar, Emirates. Yeah. Yeah, they're all good. They're all good. <laughs> <laughs> but see, this the is the thing. Retreat. And that's the other thing you all have to think about is it is expensive to fly these days. It's like two, three times as much. As before COVID, no, seriously, I'm not joking. Yeah. That's that's so the problem because you... because these residencies, not all of them, but some of these residencies have fees, and mm-hmm. what they're not, what the, what those fees are not counting is also your flying. So La Mama is great, La Mama is expensive, and also a flight on top of that. There's no way that mm-hmm. I can afford it. It's just too expensive. But Thomas also catch the bus, Sen, and catch the bus, catch catch the bus, take the bus. <laughs> Through Sinai, <laughs> through Israel, Palestine, through oh the earthquake, the earthquake through Syria, through through civil war Syria, through the earthquake ridden Turkey, across the Balkans to Italy. Take the bus is what you just said to me. I could take a ferry easier. <laughs> I could take a ferry from Alexandria easier than taking a bus. That would be ridiculous. I don't even think I can. I don't think I can get a visas to get through the countries I would need to get through to take a bus to Italy. <laughs> Can you take a train? Same thing. <laughs> it's the exact same thing. I could literally get on a on a ferry in Alexandria and just cross the Mediterranean like two or three days. I think it's a two day trip from Alexandria to somewhere in Italy and then take a train. Oh, why don't you do that? I'm not Greta Thunberg. I'm not taking ferries <laughs> places. <laughs> Does she take only ferries? Does she only travel on ferries? Whenever she whenever she has to travel uh, where she can't take a train, she goes by boat. And so, yeah, she literally crosses the Atlantic anytime she needs to get to the United States. And it's just, I watched wow. I watched a podcast, I watched a, a YouTube series with her. Um, and it was like a, I think it was a two week sail journey across the North Atlantic, which is really rough waters. And she oh, was just... Sounds- Intense. She was throwing up and miserable and cold and wet the entire time. <laughs> it, it it looked like hell. I mean, I want to save the planet too, but it just looked like hell. Um, you know, oh, I was speaking of saving the planet. Speaking of saving the planet, I was watching something the other day, and they were talking about twenty nine uh, whales washed up on the shore, dying. What? And then they were like, the reason why is because of the increased internet shopping. And shipping boats killing whales. Ugh. I was like, I, I, I literally just like turned the TV off. I was like, I can't take it. I, I, I just can't. That's it's awful. like two steps forward and nine steps back. <laughs> I know, exactly. Are we making any progress? So, so with your latest on the on the <laughs> on the <laughs> environment, are we still at no turn back? It's oh, over. There's, yeah, it's uh, I was. So as we're preparing for COP28, um, you know, we we have been talking about climate action. Like what what are, the, what are the things we need to do? They have just decided it's not about climate action. Now it's about climate adaptation. It's not it's not mitigation anymore. It's adaptation. We're only going to be talking about how to how to adapt to what is going to happen. Yeah. So get your residencies. <laughs> get your residencies in now. <laughs> 
it won't be there anymore. Anywhere in New it York is going to be. It's going to be it's flooded. Gonna be it's going to. It's going to be too hot. <laughs> it's, you got to. You got to get there. Summertime. Summertime residencies. While you can still go outside and not boil. Uh, get it. It's going to be it all about hot. that wintertime residency. There goes our. There goes our discount. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I think that's time for a what segue. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen and non-binary conforming individuals, you know who you are. You, you know who you are. are. <laughs> the stereo sounds of J D B. should do my ASMAR MNR. Not a thing. No? That's I shouldn't do my too ASMR. Many words. AMSR. You, you, you're gonna you're gonna lead a seminar? I'm gonna lead I'm gonna lead a seminar. You can, you can lead a seminar if you want. I'm gonna lead a, I'm gonna do a solo podcast and this is gonna be me talking like this. I turn in for it. Yeah. yeah. I know you I know you but see, I gotta get. What do I need? I need. I need like. I need like. Sounds. You, you need like, crinkly. You need plastic. Yeah. Yeah. Adam Marple. Mm-hmm. Do you have any provocations? Uh, I've got two, uh, and it does, it's probably not going to be a uh, surprise. Look at the things that I'm linking below and find. Oh, you know, obviously, find there. There are many things out there. Do something. Uh, find a residency, invest in it, look into it, see if you can afford it, one. And if you can't afford it now, they are yearly things, so plan yeah, ahead for those for things. Yeah. Um, my second my, my second question, not necessarily a provocation, we would love to hear about your residencies or your retreats. Uh, we'd Ooh, love to hear about um, what you've done and what it's what has been a benefit for you. Obviously, we don't want to hear about your horrible internship stories. I mean, that's another podcast <laughs> for another day, but we'd love to actually hear like, we think we think that residencies and retreats um, and labs are really very valuable for an artist. I'd love to hear uh, what you think about that as well. I'd love to hear what you've taken away from it, what you've gotten from it, friendships, collaborations, um, you know, l- what you've learned that you know changed pals, pen pals, all of those things. We'd love to hear those. So my provocation: uh, take a residency if you if you haven't, and if you have, then let us know about it. Because well, we've mean, got a residency and a workshop and a lab coming up. So, you know. Well, hello. We want to learn, learn from the best about how to Come make ours now. the best. Come on now. Yeah. Well, my provocation is sign up for yeah. our retreat. That's my yeah. provocation. If you really want to know how we work and if you get really excited about the way we work and you want to you want to commit to some really intense training, come join us in Bali. Yeah. August 19th to the 29th. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, Adam Marple, how would we know mm-hmm. that they did this? They're going to go to speakpipe.com backslash theater of others. Mm. Speakpipe.com backslash theater of others. Theater with an R-E, theater of others, all one word. You can get a 90-second voice message there. We'll play it on air. We'd love to hear from you. We haven't had somebody do speakpipe in a long time. What's wrong? What's the boycott on speakpipe? We need I don't to understand. hear your voices, y'all. Yeah, uh, yeah. Our voices are great, but we want to hear your voices too. Mm. We want to hear your voice. You can get, like, mm-hmm. even leave an ASMR. Message. Don't don't do that. No, no, don't an do that. Because we message. No, don't do that. But you can leave an email at podcast at theaterofothers dot com. Mm. We are also on Facebook, Instagram, and our website. Instagram, There's yeah. all ways to get in touch with us on those places. Oh, cool. uh, and uh, as we continue to do these amazing announcements, and we ha- we will have so many more announcements, the only way you're going to know about this is if they do what, Woody? Subscribe, 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 subscribe. We come into your mm-hmm. inbox 
Eric. 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 E R dash E E K. Eric. Eric. We come into your inbox, Eric, and you can only get that if you subscribe. Subscribe, mm-hmm. subscribe, subscribe. Mm-hmm. And if you like mm-hmm. us, leave us, you know, what my Uber driver does is, you know, give me five star, give me five star. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My, five star for me, five star for you. It's win win. Five star, five star, five star, five stars. And then leave us a little comment if you really like us because then people go, whoa. People are talking about this podcast. This is where I want to go for my theater. This is where I go for my theater with a T-R-E. Oh. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I will. I will. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. Indubitably. Indubitably. What was your friend's name? Olga Aska Ala Olive. Olive Pasha Pasca still. Ala Pasca Pasca still. Yeah, there you go. We should bring Ala Pasca Pasca still on the podcast. She was in the Director's Lab um, series. We did a did a whole uh, half hour with oh, her. Oh yes, oh, that's right. She was. She was. Sorry, Olive. I just like saying your name, Olive. She's Let a great. Say it again. Olive. Olive Pasha Pascal still. Pasha. Pascal. Pascal. Still. Still. That's no Mihai Chisek Mihai, but it's definitely. Wow, that's good. Don't ask me to spell it, but I can pronounce that shit. (laughs) Hello. Mm -hmm. Practice makes perfect. It took me three years. Yeah. (laughs) We did mention him many times on the podcast. So yeah. Oh, and how many times we mess it up? Mess that up. What 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 what, what podcast should people go to to hear that? Because I know you have everything memorized, Adam. Right, right. I have every. Good lord, I don't know. I think uh, it's it podcast twenty three. Sure, that sounds good. Go listen to podcast twenty three and tell us if we're. Tripped. What is podcast twenty three? I don't know. It's uh, uh, intimacy direction with uh, Alicia Rodas. That's what that. Oh, uh, that's I a good know. one. That's a good one. If it's not twenty three, you definitely need to go back to that one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Adam. I love you too. <laughs> And so I'm going to see you. You as well. So I'll talk to you next week? I guess so. <laughs> okay, <laughs> fine. All right, okay. fine. And for y'all listeners, we'll be in your inbox next week. Oh, grrr. Bye. <laughs>Thanks for joining us this week on the Theater Brothers Podcast. Make sure to visit our website, theaterbrothers.org, where you can subscribe to the show in iTunes, Stitcher, or via RSS, so you'll never miss a show. While you're at it, if you found value in this show, we'd appreciate a rating on iTunes. Or if you'd simply tell a friend about the show, that would help us out too. A special thank you to Purple Planet for the music you've heard. The Theater Brothers creates a shared community of artists and audiences for the purposes of exploring the most profound issues of our lives and time. We believe the play watches the audience. The audience is necessary and they are witness to what happens. And you get to be witness to us making that happen. The purpose of this podcast is to open up our process and let you in. We're peeling back the curtain, so to speak, and encouraging you to follow along, to ponder, prod, and question. To join us and criticize us if need be. Being a witness is no passive task and requires much from you. Are you up for the journey? Be sure to tune in next week for our next journey.